today we're going to have some fun. For our guest, we have Jessica Lewis, who's the founder of Rise Up Queens, and we're going to get real and have some very uh, challenging conversations. A lot of, of these conversations people like, are not regularly having in our society today. Uh, Jessica has some pretty unique perspectives working with women. She runs the only faith-based uh, personal development seminar for women who want to tap into their feminine and break through either trauma or break through things that are preventing them from being truly free. And so she has some unique perspectives, and I can't wait to dive in and have some of these hard conversations with you. You've worked with many women. You have a marriage transformation seminar. Like, you know what it takes to make a great marriage. And so uh, let's dive in. I'm happy to have you, babe. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Let's, uh, let's dive into kind of a fun conversation that you've been having recently regarding the alpha female. Like, what, what, what is that and how does it show up? Oh, man. Um, it's funny um, because I feel like I was the alpha female in an unhealthy way, right? Society um, tells women that you can have kids, you can um, go to work, you can be a wife, you can do all of these things and somehow do it well, right? And um, it's, I, I got so mad the other day, we were watching um, the Super Bowl and there was that commercial where they portrayed Zeus and then like his wife and Zeus couldn't even turn on the microwave. And his wife's like, oh honey, and she went and like click, click, click. <laughs> And it might have been an amazing commercial, but just the portrayal of men being weaker. It's like society wants women to take the lead and women to be the strong ones and women to do that. And I did it for a good portion of my life before we met each other. And I created a lot of disaster. And I believe I carried a lot of things that God didn't intend women to carry in marriages. So at Rise Up Queens, um, I had to discover like this, fe this feminine side of me, like I lost it, whether it was through childhood or the way I was raised, like for some reason I lost it. And when I entered in our relationship in the beginning, like I wanted to be in charge, like I wanted to be the leader, like I wanted to be alpha, but it wasn't from a healthy place. It was from an unhealthy place of, I'm gonna keep you at a distance and I'm gonna use that in order to stay in control and use that so that you can't ever hurt me or um, so that I don't have to um, be fearful of anything. How does the alpha woman show up in relationships? Because yeah, when we first met, it was interesting because you had just got out of a relationship, right? You had just gone through a divorce and you, you did not want to be the leader in the relationship, but you still had that tendency to want to control things and want to still run. <laughs> but consciously you're like, hey, I, I really want someone else to be the leader because it caused an incredible amount of stress and strife in your life. So how does, how does the alpha uh, wife show up in, in relationships? Um, so the unhealthy alpha wife okay. shows up in comparison. So I would constantly compare myself to you, and I always wanted to be better than you. I was always judging myself against you, yet we we're supposed to be partners. Like we we're supposed to be like, we would complement each other beautifully once we realized that we weren't supposed to be the same. So I wanted to be better than you, right? I wanted to lead the business. I wanted to make the decisions. I wanted to be in charge at the end of the day. And I was gonna challenge any authority, that you, that would stop that. Mm -hmm. So I believe the alpha female, the unhealthy alpha, alpha female uses that like um, strong personality as a way to keep their spouse at a distance, right? I didn't want to, like if we were gonna get in conflict, I was gonna hurt you, you weren't gonna hurt me. Right? I, was, I was almost, in a sense, like playing not to lose. Like I think of it as playing mm. not to lose in marriage. Like I was dominated with fear and fear of what was going to happen. So I constantly unknowingly thought of ways that if you left me, then I'm going to do this. Like I, there was always like a plan B. There wasn't an all out commitment. I wasn't playing to win. I wasn't 100% in. I was guarded and I wanted to make sure that I, no matter what, if you weren't going to hurt me, I was going to stay in control. Mm, that's so good. Yeah, I think we can do that on both sides, right? It's, uh, I see this battle in a lot of relationships where the, the man is trying to take control, right, of the relationship. And then the, 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 the woman, right, is also battling for control. And then there's just, they're going head to head mm -hmm. and it's causing strife, especially high performers. Right, it's especially, especially, especially yeah, because there's, there's obviously incredible women that want to be stay-at-home moms, but for, for those women that have this desire to also go achieve and compete in the marketplace, which is fantastic, they don't know how to turn it off at home. Yeah. 
So they're battling at home with their spouses, bringing that same energy, that masculine energy back into their house. And then men are kind of confused, right? Do we battle back? Do we like, what's, what's our role? Are we supposed to compete back? How do we, how do we manage this thing? And it's confusing because society, right? Like you mentioned, tells women, Hey, like you, you need to be in control. Like you, you should be leading. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the Bible says something completely different. And so you also mentioned this conversation of commitment. I love, I love, uh, I'd love to hear like, what was, what was the major shift? We've seen that a lot in relationships with the marriages that we've worked with where there's just like, they're not committed. They're not all in on the relationship, willing to do whatever it takes, right? They're kind of one foot is, is out, ready to, ready to go if that other person does something that they don't like. And so how, how do you describe commitment and what are you seeing when you're working with wives? So when I think about commitment, I, I think it's even a level deeper, right? Because commitment is what it shows up as. But like, why do I not show up committed, right? What are the reasons that I'm not all in? And the word like self-preservation comes to mind, right? Like my interests are in myself. Like I come first in this need and it's, I believe it's deeply tied to like conditional love. Like uh, for some reason I was bred with this conditional love. Like I was gonna, if you're gonna withdraw love from me, then I'm not gonna give it to you. Like I'm there, I wasn't like, I didn't understand just that concept of unconditional love and giving even if I might not get it in return or giving without expectation and being able to show up for you in a way like that no one's potentially ever shown up for you before. And I, I believe like you, you've you modeled that to me and it's still my tendency to self-preserve, to look out for myself first and look at my interests first and then take you into account. But I believe like Jesus calls us like in a whole nother way to show up in our relationships. Like if we did our marriages as if we were doing it under the Lord, it wouldn't matter whether you responded when I showed you love, right? I could just give love and not have to need anything in return. If I was allowing him to fill me, I could give to you and eventually you would give back. Like that's just naturally. However, that wasn't, that wasn't my natural tendency. I was preserving me and making sure like I was playing not to lose. Like I wasn't going to get hurt again. I wasn't going to have someone have that type of um, influence over my emotions and influence over my heart anymore. Mm -hmm. You had to surrender, <laughs> right? Yeah, do uh, right. We talk about uh, yeah. There's a book right that mentions surrender and talks about surrendering. Right, that's kind of a, a challenge. You, and the way you laughed about that was pretty funny. <laughs> I mentioned sur surrender is a hard word for a lot of women, yeah. right? And uh, and it takes a man that can show the loving care and trust uh, for a woman to be able to also soften up. And, and this is interesting. Which and I'd love to hear which is first from your perspective. And I work with the men, right? So from a woman's perspective, what are you teaching the women? Uh, but before we go into there, go ahead. It's so yeah. funny, like when you said that word surrendered, it makes me think that I, there are women that watch the Rise Up Queens video. And in the video, I talk about becoming the feminine woman that God has called you to be, mm -hmm. right? And somehow the society has um, almost brainwashed us or made us believe that feminine equals weak. Mm -hmm. And so women see this video and they're like, I don't wanna be, I don't, I don't wanna have anything to do with Rise Up Queens. I'm not weak and I don't wanna go there. That seems soft but it's actually where I have found like my power, like my ability to flow through. Like one of my um, favorite authors is Laura Doyle. And she, she gets constant criticism because um, she's teaching women how to surrender and like how to be feminine and how to live it out. But she's all for women in the marketplace earning as much as men and all for women achieving in business. She's like, I, I'm gonna achieve on the outside world, but when I come home, I wanna be worshiped. And if I bring that same energy back home, I'm not going to be worshipped. Like, it's just not possible because we are going to be battling it out, right? We're both going to be struggling. So when I come home, like, I want to soften, right? I want to be taken care of. Like, I want to be loved. I want to be nurtured. I want you to take the lead role and me not carry that stress when I'm home, even if I am out in the marketplace, like, driving and moving things forward. So I believe, like, some women would think the word surrendered and like feminine equals weak, right? But it's not the case. I don't think I've changed. Like I am a go-getter, like I am a driver, like I get things done. And in learning how to access that feminine side of me, 
I believe I've been able to create this polarity between us where we're attracted intimately to each other and the fun that we have and the playfulness that we have mm. wouldn't be possible if I didn't understand and learn how to use that skill in my intimate life with you or even my everyday life with you or, or with my children for that matter, right? The mom that's like this, 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 and this versus the mom that's like, okay, guys, let's do this. Like that mom, when I bring that out, I get different results. Mm. So good, and I love that you're able to teach that because on this journey, working with men at Rise Up Kings, right, we've, the challenge has been they're on this journey of, of stepping into their greatness, of becoming the man that God's called them to be, but then many times their wives are not on that same journey, right? They're used to the old man. And so I think you bring in this powerful, right, part that, I mean, you help a woman start to soften when they've learned to harden from all the years of their view of their man not stepping up they've hardened, and then you've brought that like teaching. It's just incredible, right? You get to spend time developing and wor working with women and helping them soften, help helping them tap into their feminine, helping them be still high achievers, right? But then learning, learning how to soften mm -hmm. and learning how to, uh, uh, how to uh, look up to their husbands as the leader. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's powerful. It's funny, as you're saying that, it makes me think of like the walls, like, a woman can't soften if she doesn't know what walls she has won, yeah. but then underneath that, like what brought those walls, right? So at the events, we get to dive deeply into like, where did this come from, right? This is a learned behavior, just like the way we relate to each other. I, based on the way I respond to you, I teach you how to interact with me, right? So you would bring, you would bring great conversations to us and what I thought was conflict. And my view of conflict at one point was I don't like it and I want to avoid it. I want to do everything to it. So when you would bring conflict, I would bring this bigness and I would try and shut it down with anger and rage and frustration and just this bigness, right? And so I then trained you to not bring that for a while until I was willing to shift in me. Like I love um, what we do at Rise Up Queens because no matter what you do, I'm responsible for how I show up in the marriage. I'm responsible for whether like I'm acting controlling, whether I'm showing up in anger and rage, whether I'm getting frustrated. I am in control of my perspective and what I focus on. And that is so powerful because so often I talk to ladies and their focus, like their perspective is all zoomed in on you guys. And, and I get it because I used to be like that. When I wasn't growing, when I wasn't moving, my focus was on you and what you weren't doing. But in that, like, I'm, it's like as if I had blinders on and I couldn't see all the other good things that you were doing. And so it just took a shift in perspective. So um, I love bringing that to light in events mm -hmm. and noticing, oh my gosh, okay, and not right or wrong and not, not bad, but just like, all right, this was ineffective. Like this wasn't working. This isn't creating the result that I want. But to get past that, someone has to get like real and they have to be willing to say like, this isn't working, I hate. I hate it with everything in me that so many couples are surrendered to good in their marriage. Yeah. Stuff isn't working and they're not willing to have the courage to have the hard conversations and to break through. And sometimes that breakthrough takes a level of commitment that you've never had before. Mm. Preach it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's powerful, right? The good to great conversation. And, 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 and one of our core values at Rise Up Kings is truth, right? Telling the truth. Yeah. So many couples are like, yeah, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Until, but they, they cover it up, yes. right? They cover it up. They cover up all of the, uh, the, good, the, the, the things that are really challenging, the things that should be addressed, they cover them up and they say, oh, my marriage is good. Yeah. When in reality, there's like a monster under the rug that's growing, mm -hmm. right? That's literally growing until they get to this place in their marriage where they're like, hey, I don't really, I don't love you anymore. Right? I, don't, I don't feel connected emotionally to you anymore. It's because you didn't go address those things. Mm -hmm. It's because you settled for good. Mm -hmm. And yes, good marriages can make it, mm -hmm. but on the other side, man, there's, a, there's just so much, right? There's just so much power. There's so much fun. There's so much epicness if we dive deep mm -hmm. into uh, exploring what, like, and be, being able to be real and say, my marriage actually isn't where I want it, right? Hey, it's a level seven or eight, cool. I really want to get it to a level 10. Then I want to get it to the next level 10. Not only in our connection, right, in our intimacy, in the bedroom, in the way that we communicate, like in each way, I want to get it to a level 10. And that's truly my passion with you, babe, is I want to, I want to continue to uh, be willing to, in companies, right, companies that we work with, when I, when I do coaching, and you know this, when I walk in, uh, like, when we start to make changes, like stuff, 
starts to get worse before it gets better. And almost every single company that I work with, and so I let the owners know and I say, hey, by the way, are you willing to go there? Are you even willing to go there or are you okay just with where it's at? Yes, it's hard right now, but are you willing to go mess stuff up? Are you willing to throw a wrench into things to make it better, but to, are you willing to lose some key team members right now? Are you willing to have to go through changing out softwares and the chaos that comes with that to get to great in your company? And so like some people are not, but many of them are when they see what's on the other side of that. And so that's the same thing in marriage. Are you willing to, are you willing to mess with things? Where are you willing to get off the status quo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. As you were saying that, it made me think that so often um, people, when we say, oh, we do marriage retreats, they're like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Like, I want to be, like, I want to do that. But what I think what has to come before that is the interpersonal work. Like, so often it's easy to um, just want to work, like, on the togetherness. But until I worked on me and getting whole for me and, like, healing trauma, as I healed me, I was able to relate to you and see you in a different way. Right? But until I got whole individually and was able to see what's like, what is actually triggering me? What's bothering me? Like, why could like, I had to get curious? And I feel like we, I just had a call with the ladies yesterday, just kind of about this curiosity. Like, we go so fast sometimes, or I've noticed like it's just task, 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 task. And we're not curious about the things around us. We don't think like, okay, I'm upset right now. This is a red flag. Like, why could I be? What could have triggered that? What's really going on? What's the story I'm telling myself about this right now? Right? And it, it, is it effective or ineffective? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I'm reading a, a great book and it talks about we don't see reality, mm -hmm. right? We don't see the actual reality. We see the way the reality occurs to us. Mm -hmm. We see the way that... Yeah, it's, it's our version, it's, but it's not real. It's the way it occurs to us. And so we think like, oh, my husband's a certain way or my wife's a certain way. Uh, no, it's the way that they occur to you. It's the way that you see them. And when you change, right, when you evolve, you start seeing things different, right? The way you, when the, when the way you look at, at things changes, the, the things that you look at change, like the things you actually look at start changing. And so we have to be willing to say, hey, maybe my reality isn't real. Maybe, maybe like the way I'm looking at things isn't actually the right way. Maybe, maybe I'm way off and we have to, that's part of growth. That's part of being open. And, and many times I am way off, right? Many times I have certain thoughts and conversations and ways of looking at things that are actually backwards or that are missing key points of data or information. And so I have to be curious enough to go and say, Hey, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there is more in the relationship. Maybe I'm missing something, right? It's when we think we know it that we get stuck, but we have to be willing to constantly say, Hey, I'm open to the idea that my, the way I'm looking at this and the people around me are not actually what's happening. It's just the way I'm looking at it, the way it's occurring to me. Mm -hmm. Right. But in order to get to that, I mean, man, that takes a drop in pride and ego. Yeah. Because so many of us, like, I mean, myself included, like, I want to be right. Right. And in order for me to be right, you're going to be wrong. And so that takes a deep, that takes a willingness or, or a curiosity to, um, you have to drop the pride. Yeah, we just had a conversation with, uh, I was talking to a coaching client, they were, they just got in a fight with their wife, and uh, like they were battling it out. And I had the conversation, like somebody has to be willing to drop their pride to move on from this. And it's the pride, it's the ego, it's the wanting to be right that like causes us to get stuck, right? And we have to be willing to say, hey, I'm okay being wrong, you know? And so that's hard in relationships. It's uh, it's an ego thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what you were saying earlier makes me think, uh, Laura Doyle, the author that I love, talks about spouse fulfilling prophecy. So it's one of the tools that I teach to ladies. And so we've, I had a coaching client and we were talking and she used this tool. And so she says, I'm going to, even though this isn't reality, I'm going to speak this into existence. Kind of like what the Bible talks about. Like our words are powerful. Our words bring life or death. And um, she would talk about, she, her, her thing was that her husband put um, dishes in the dishwasher and they were always dirty, like overly dirty. So they would come out dirty. And she said, Jessica, I felt like a crazy person, but I started to, to pull the dishes out of the dishwasher and say, wow, this glass is so clean because what she used to be doing was she would complain to her husband and be like, you always put the dishes in the dishwasher dirty. You do this, you do this, you do this. And nothing changed. So the conversation of spouse fulfilling prophecies came up and she's like, okay, 
I'll give it a try. I'm going to like, and it sounded crazy, but she just started to say, wow, these dishes are so clean. Wow. And she's like, you know what? The dishes started to come out clean. She's like, I don't know what shifted or when it happened or if he started cleaning them better, but I was, I changed, like I created the reality that I wanted to see. And I believe we can say, oh, my husband, my husband doesn't want to spend time with me. And if that's the story you continue to say to yourself, that is the evidence you'll gather in your daily life. You will see and f focus on all the ways he doesn't spend time with you. When in reality, he probably is showing up sometimes and he is going out of his way, but it's, you can't even see it because it's not in your belief system. So the way reality occurs for you, right? That's not in, you can't see that. You have blinders on and you only see him a certain way. And so one of the things that I've had to learn to do with that is like, if there's something that I'm needing or something that I'm desiring, like if I want you to pick up your clothes and I've asked you to do it a couple of times and, and you don't do it, if it's important to me, I can just do it. I can either get stressed out about it or I can just do it, right? You're no, it's okay. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back, right, over the last couple of years, like your level of critique around me has dropped to almost zero. So I rarely ever hear you critique anything. Like, why are you doing this? Or what, what, like that, that, that doesn't even, that doesn't even happen. You don't ask, why am I doing this? Or why can't you do this more? Or why, or, it's just, you just share, um, it's interesting, you just share what you, uh, what you, what you need. Like, hey, like you've been working a lot, it's all good. I, I would love a little bit more time with you. Right, that's how, that's how, you, that's how you critique now. Mm -hmm. And I would have before, right? So like the alpha female would have been like, you don't care about me, you don't spend time with me. It would have been like all about not putting you in a position to actually wanna do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I have the control with my language and the way I show up and the way I ask for things. I, lit I can create life or death. I can say it in a way where you 100% are never gonna do it because I've attacked you I've attacked you as a man and how you show up, right? Or I can, in my feminine, I can call, call out, right, the, my desire and ask it in a way that you want to meet it. I believe men and husbands want to be their wife's oh, yeah. hero. They want to show up. Like, they want, you, you constantly, I remember, you always just say, like, I just want you to be happy. Just tell me what it is. Like, I just want you to be happy. Yet... I believe in our language, we learn as women to, like one, we don't say what's actually going on. We don't ask for it in a way that makes our husbands want to do it, right? And then we nag and complain and um, just go about everything in such a wrong way that actually pushes you, it pushes our husbands away versus pulling them in. Mm. Yeah, you've shifted, right? You've shifted our entire relationship that way. And it's, it, it's, it's funny, it's like what comes first, right? The guy starting to show up or the woman starting to, to soften and have that. And I think it's a combination of both, ideally, right? Yeah. It's a combination of both. The men really stepping up and, and loving on their wives, right? And, and building them up, right? And just, and just like women want love, right? Men want respect. Mm -hmm. We need respect. Women need love. Like we, we both need both. However, that's, that's like primary, and so I give you the love and take care of you and like and, and supportive of you, and you and you therefore like want to respect me. You and you don't want to critique me on everything, right? You want to give me space, and so it's powerful. It's powerful when couples actually take this uh, take marriage as like a journey of uh, personal growth. Like, hey, how can we level up? It's interesting. Um, one of the phrases we say often is appreciate what you want more of. Yeah. Because so often I think that when women, as when I was focused on me, I remember um, I would always ask you like, hey, babe, do I look good in this? Like, hey, babe, like you didn't tell me that I looked nice. Oh, do you like this dress? Like it was always about me. And then finally one day you're like, you know, like I would love, I would love to know that I look good too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've literally, it's, I've literally made it all about me. And so like I've intentionally tried to appreciate everything in you that I want more of, right? So like, in, for example, like That's good. one of my things that I had asked was for you to set up a date night. And I was like, babe, I just want you to be more romantic. I want you to do this. And um, you got tickets for us to Wicked. And we had already seen Wicked before. And you, I saw the credit card thing and you had spent a lot of money. And I was like, oh my goodness gracious, right? And so the first instinct in me was I asked you to do something and you did it. But then I wanted to critique you and I wanted to say, oh, you didn't do it right. Oh, like you shouldn't have spent that much money. You should like, it's like as women, like 
this control thing is like, I, I, have to, I have to fight it every day because I, wa I wanted you to do something, you did it, and then I was gonna tell you how you didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. And that was not gonna make you wanna do it ever again. It's like I had to bite my tongue. Even when we were there, you wanted to leave. <laughs> and I was like, we are not leaving. I am gonna appreciate this. I am gonna say thank you for this. I am gonna yeah. be grateful for this. And I am gonna just fully accept it and like receive. So like, that's another conversation we have. Like, how do you receive graciously? Like when your husband does something for you or when someone else even tries to help you, you're like, oh no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna inconvenience them, right? When of course you do, right? You just don't know how to receive it. Like, and be gracious about it and say thank you. So what you're saying is marriage is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but, a, there, but it yeah. can be figured out, oh, yeah. right? Like, we're, yeah. I believe, like, Emerson Egerett's In Love and Respect talks about an energizing cycle and this other cycle, the cycle that doesn't work, yep. right? Like, I believe we've learned this rhythm of, mm -hmm. like, as I love on you and give you what you need and show you respect and show up like I have we have the conversations like what do you need for me like how can I be better for you and I don't think those conversations are hard for you but they're hard for me because my brain wants to go to I'm not good enough and take it personal and look at all the things that I'm not doing it's easier for me to focus on the things that I'm not doing but like I still out of courage say like, how can I show up better for you? Like I wanna know. And so we're, our desire is both to pour into each other. And then when we pour into each other and it gets mistaken, because oftentimes like we have, couples have great intentions. They wanna show up for each other, but somehow the other couple just misses it. And they don't see it. Like they don't like, they're like, oh, like a woman will want flowers and she'll be like, I want flowers. And then the husband brings them and she's like, well, you just did it because I said so, right? And we're like, what is that about, right? Like he actually showed up, but you're going to now complain that he did what you wanted him to do? Um, so I believe we've just, we've found this energizing cycle where when we have an upset, we bring it up. It doesn't just get shoved under the rug. We talk about it and we clear it. So like, I don't hold resentment towards you. What's a, what's a recent upset that we've had where I've messed up on something? I don't know. Do you have one in mind? Um, I'm just curious. I don't know. I believe, I mean, most of our upsets are like when I think you're like, when I mistakenly see your intentions to, as trying to control me versus mm. trying to help me. That's your trigger, right? That's kind of one of your biggest triggers is when I do try to fix you. Yeah. Right. Try to fix and you. And no one likes to be fixed. However, totally. Oh yeah. That's a journey that I've had to be on. It's a challenge. That's a challenging journey. Me stopping to try to fix everything that you, you do, right? If you don't do something right, or you need help with something, or you cry out and say, Hey, I'm struggling. My natural tendency is to want to fix it. And I'm good normally, right? I fix employees problems. I fix company problems. Like that's what I do. And that's what most men do. And that, that is the, that is a major challenge. And that was hard for me to start to slow that down to where when you say, Hey, I'm struggling with this. And like the answer, that I believe is literally right there, right? And I'm like looking at it and it's very clear to not give you that answer to say, hey babe, I love you. <laughs> I'm here for you, I'm here to, I'm here to support you. And so, because uh, you, you don't need the answer. You can fit, you're smart, right? Women, are, men, women, we're intelligent. We don't need to be fixed. We just need somebody to be there to love on us and to support us. Unless you say, hey, I need help with this problem. Can you help me fix it? Right, then I'll provide the answer. But yeah, that is that has been one of my one of my challenges for sure. I can tell you what could have turned into a fight with the old me recently. Okay. Go ahead. So yesterday we were talking about like my health stuff, right? And yeah. um, I have just different challenges with my health, and I was listing them all off. And I wanted to be right about it. I was almost um, you didn't say it, but you kind of said it, or I got it that I was being a victim. And you were like, "Well, I have this, 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 and this," and the old me. That was poor, poor empathy on my part, right? She's crying out for help saying, uh, right? I, I feel so sad about this. Like, well, let me list my challenges that I have, right? Very uh, poor empathy. It was from a good place, right? Because I was, I saw where it was going. Yes. You know, but still. No, but the old me would have been like, no, I'm more like, so if that was a cry for help and you met that with another cry for help, right? The old me would have cried louder. Right and been bigger and like it would have had to have been about me. What did you shift? Yeah, what what happened where you didn't that didn't turn into a big fight? Because that could have easily turned into a fight. So what what? Uh... I think I've become more comfortable with my ugliness. 
the ugly mm -hmm. sides of me and the things that I hate about me, the things that I don't like about me, the things that I don't want anyone to know. Like I had this perfection is a miss that like I needed to be seen as this. I had ego, like I needed to be seen as perfect, right? So anything, any conversation that- You are perfect, babe. <laughs> and there's no ugly parts of you. Uh, any conversation it, with you or conflict with you where you brought out that ugliness, I had to defend that. And so it would show, I would defend it by anger, by attacking you, by um, discounting you, by displacing it on you, by minimizing it. I, I would do everything to not see that. And I think my relationship with me being willing to see that with me with no judgment, mm -hmm. no story, no defining who I am has transformed the way that I can communicate with you and be with you because I was kind of being a victim yesterday and you didn't say it to me, but I was, I was able to have a different relationship with it yesterday because before my brain would have started spiraling and I would have been mad at you. I would have made it about you. I would have said, you're attacking me. I would have said all these things in my head rather than yesterday I was able to just be with it. I'm like, okay, there are solutions around me. I can do something about this. I'm not a victim to this. Mm, so good, powerful, right? Because I, lo I love what you said about just getting, uh, accepting and acknowledging the ugliness that all of us have, right? We all have ugly parts, but we try to hide it. We put a mask on, we try to pretend like we're not, yeah. right? But we have, we have, like, I love that word actually, ugly. We have ugly parts of us, yeah. right? We have ugly parts of our body, our mind, <laughs> our thoughts. I rebuke that statement. Yeah, we have parts that are just call it what society says is ugly, right? That's embracing fat, right? Embra like it is what it is. Like just not, not judging yourself because you have that or not judging yourself because you have a thought that you shouldn't have had, right? Or because you turned it, right, we're going victim or because I messed up again by, right, not, not answering to a solution the right way or not, not addressing something, not addressing a cry for help right, with a, a loving response, mm -hmm. right? So I failed in those moments, but then I don't judge myself. And so learning to say, okay, cool, I messed up, right? And acknowledging that instead of saying, no, I didn't mess up, right? Oh, no, I'm gonna compare to, uh, I mess up less than other people, mm -hmm. right? And then comparing my ugliness, well, I'm not as ugly as that person. Just, just being with it, right? Just saying, okay, cool, I got, I got challenges, I got issues, and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna learn to live with it. That is a powerful way to live and a powerful place to be and a way that, other, that you can love other people. Right? You're not judging other people based on your own insecurities that you're bringing forth. Like the more you can say, hey, I'm ugly, there's ugly parts of me, I'm beautiful and I'm ugly, yeah. uh, it, right, yin and yang, right? I have beautiful dark light and I got a, a darkness inside of me and that's okay, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go continue to love other people and love their darkness, love their struggles, love their challenges, love who they are or who they're showing up as. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it ties back to the ego, right? Because if I want, I need you to see me as this, like I've told the story, but um, a big shift in this like came with your mom. Like your mom wanted um, some furniture from a house that we moved out of. And I was like, totally, I will give it to you, right? I would love to give it to you, yes. And she followed up with me <laughs> about the furniture. And like two days prior, I had asked our assistant to sell it and she sold it and um, your mom came and she's like, hey, so um, where, what about that furniture? And I was like, oh, you know, I blamed it on our assistant. I was like, oh, I told her to sell it a long time ago, which was true, wasn't a full lie. And um, she sold it, oh, I'm sorry. And as I've been working on just like being with like, how do I want people to see me and how is that not true? Like, what is the, I was like, I, I called her and I was like, hey, um, I just want you to know that I was totally selfish and I lied to you. Like that, it wasn't the truth that um, I told her a while ago. That is a ballsy move. I was very <laughs> proud when you mentioned, when you said that. Yeah, yeah. that was. And yeah. I was like, I, I told her to sell it. And why I did was because um, I was just being selfish. I don't want to deal with having to get it to you. And I made it, I made it about me. So will you forgive me? And like, because I want her to see me as the kind and loving and caring daughter-in-law, right? Mm -hmm. So any, and normally my brain would have just justified the lie and said, oh no, but that's okay. Because like, oh, it would have been a lot of work and it would have been a lot of work to get it to her, but I said I would do it, mm. right? So it's just so interesting how we justify things that we know aren't right 
to protect our ego, right? Mm-hmm. To, to keep our ego, to protect the image that we have of ourselves, yeah. which is ego. Oh, I'm kind, I'm loving. There are t- I'm not sometimes. Yeah. I am selfish, but I don't want to see those times. Yeah. But when I have the courage and the willingness to, only from that point can I change. And only from that point can I show up different in our marriage. Mm. You are a powerhouse. <laughs> I love it. Oh, thank you. If, um, hmm, I have so many thoughts and questions. I wish we could go longer, but uh, maybe we have a few more minutes. So what would you, what would you say to, um, what, would, what is one of the, the biggest things that you're seeing uh, as far as transformation from women that go through the Rise Up Queens event? We don't, I don't talk about the Rise Up Queens event a, a lot, right? Because it's obviously your deal. Mm-hmm. But what, 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 is, what, is the tran- what is the transformation? I'm curious. Like, how, how, can you really transform a woman in a couple days? Like, do, can they really change? Or is it, like, is that even possible? And, and if, if so, what do you see as the major shift, right? It's not, they're not made perfect. But what's the major shift that happens from the way they walk in until how they, how they walk out? Mm. I think when they come to the first event, the first event is all about awareness, right? And so we deal with baggage. We deal with lies. Like up on the stage, I have my baggage, right? That I'm an adulterer, that I was abandoned as a kid, that I was cheated on. Like just all the stuff that I carry with me that no one knows. All the stuff that I bring into every single relationship that I don't talk about. We talk about the stuff that's not being talked about. So somehow these women come out and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. I mean, literally, I have women in there that think that they're the only ones that struggle with anxiety. I have women that have shared things for the first time that they've never, their husbands don't even know about them. Like there's this space where for the first time, maybe they can just see themselves as they are and that be okay. And then they can create a space of like, okay, this is where I'm at, but this is where I wanna be. Like, it's almost like it's the truth. Like they're able to face like the truth of what's actually going on. And at the exact same time, they discover their relationship with their body. I mean, just intimately, I was disconnected with my body and intimacy. Like, Like, I wasn't, I don't know, like there was lots of shame. There's a lot of shame around our bodies, around our sexuality, around our vulvas, around intimacy. Like there's just, women carry a lot of that shame. So then we discover like the weight of that shame and like what it looks like to let go of that. And like, what if we were just for an instance, we're able to see just for a moment, see our body the way God sees us and see our our naked body. Like I don't have them get naked there, but like Mm -hmm. their naked body. Like what if like they just begin to develop this new relationship with the ugliness, the new relationship with the truth of who they are, because only from knowing where you're actually at and being willing to face it, can you create any change. Like, so we get to like some of the roots of some things. So then long-term as they continue to work with me, they they gain tools to say, okay, like this is showing up, right? Whether it's ego or pride or I'm controlling or I like talk down to my husband or I'm constantly complaining, but I don't know what to, I don't know how to do it any different. So then we work through tools of like, how do I want to show up? Like, what is the, who has God called me to be as a woman? Because like men are called to be one way, but women are called to be another. And there's a way that works and there's a way that doesn't work. And so thankfully, I knew very well the ways that didn't work. (laughs) So we talk through what will work. And so the women that long-term work with me, are they have more intimacy. They have more connection. They're able to actually be true and live authentically. They don't have to hide behind, especially with their husbands. The person they're going to spend the rest of their life with and have an opportunity to have the deepest connection with They don't have to hide behind that fakeness anymore, and they can actually create vulnerability in a way that they've never had before. Mm. That's so cool. And I know you haven't, I'm going to put you on the spot. I know you haven't really, maybe you've thought about it, but what's your vision? What's your vision for Rise Up Queens? Like what is, where do you see it going? And how is God going to use you through this thing? So it's, it's pretty powerful. Again, there's nothing, there's, I don't know of anything like this, right? There's women's retreats, right? That only goes so deep. This is a, this is a faith-based, like that you were tapping into women's right, trauma, their, their fears, their challenges, their insecurities. You're helping them become more feminine, right? Through movement, through just really like powerful stuff that you can't get at church, 
right? And so it's, it's but w w yeah, what's, what's your vision? Where, where, do you see, where do you see this thing going? Well, I feel like your vision is to awake a generation of men, right? So it'd be well, that is my actual vision. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to awaken a generation of women that live in the freedom that Christ has called us to. Mm. He says we're free when we're believers, but we don't live free. <laughs> no. no, the work's been done, right? Mm -hmm. The work has already been done. Right, Christ died. It's finished. The work is done. We're set free, yet we live trapped in fear, in anxiety, in bondage, in all of these things. But we're we're truly set free. So there's a disconnect there. Right? Yeah. So then, as I as these women can live in their freedom, then to collectively, right, we can then transform marriages. Like we can change, like awake an awakened man and awakened woman, like that's someone who's going to go impact their community. That's someone that can go run Bible studies and be the light, like truly be the light on the hill and love how Jesus loved. But if I don't deal with my ugliness first, I, I, I can't, I don't know. Yeah, there's no, uh, if we don't heal the soul, right, and the heart of a human being, right, and, 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 and make that whole, right, God's done the work, but there's still work we have to do. If we don't do that work, then we're, bro we're continuously living as broken human beings. And I don't believe we're called to live as broken human beings. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, we're going to have some sins, but we can live very healthily, right? And we can have incredible marriages that are on fire. Like, that's what glorifies God. By like that, like having a marriage that's on fire, that's passionate, that's thriving, mm -hmm. right? To have a business that's doing well, that's where you're taking care of your employees, a body that is healthy where you're taking care of your body, a faith that's continuously evolving and growing and right, that relationship with Christ, like that glorifies God. I don't know why the picture just came to my mind was that verse in Solomon where it talks about may her breast <laughs> satisfy you always, right? May her breast satisfy you always in marriage. But if she doesn't view her breasts as beautiful and doesn't have a healthy relationship with her body, I can't let them satisfy you forever in marriage. Mm. <laughs> I was a little... No, it's a divine inspiration, right? We <laughs> prayed that God would uh, give you the words to say. So that's, that's fantastic. It's a... Um, yeah, it's powerful. There's a... Uh, yeah, when you, when you start healing some of that stuff and start... right, I, I, We talk about ugliness, but it, in, in reality, it's beauty, mm. right? The ugly parts of our body. The, but it's when we get past that, then we can actually start to see the true beauty mm -hmm. that's there. Mm -hmm. But it actually starts with acknowledging the areas we don't like instead of pretending like we don't like it. Mm. Hey, it, I, it's, I don't really not not like my book. It's like, eh, yeah, you do. <laughs> you know, it's all perspective. It. Yeah. It's so yeah. funny, like on social media, there's always that picture of like the cat in the mirror, but then it's the lion. But I think we have it like opposite. Like we are the lion, but we see ourselves as this little cat. Mm -hmm. Like we have this warped perspective of what's actually true. Yeah. So, I challenge, like, I challenge women to break that up. Like, what is the truth? And then how do you stand in that truth? And then from that place, what do you want to be? Who do you want to become? What do you want to show up as? Fantastic. I love the, uh, you brought so much wisdom to this conversation. I appreciate you, babe, big time. Uh, you make me, uh, right, the work that you're doing, right, is causing and inspiring me to continue to level up and to continue to grow. So for those of you that are listening, it's obvious, right, she's a uh, powerhouse and doing some big things. So I'm, uh, I'm grateful for you to for jump on and take time out. And actually, th these are fun. We got to do more of these for sure. I think we mentioned that the last time we had a great conversation. <laughs> and then a year later, right, we have another conversation. So um, hopefully we can get some more of this content out there. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, pouring your heart out into women and transforming marriages uh, all for the glory of God. Amen. Love you. Love you. <laughs>